as you begin working on your landscapes, I wanted to just show you a few things uh, to be thinking about. So if you're wanting to do these things in your landscape, um, you know how to do them. So first of all, one of the things I wanted to show you is sort of how to fade or blend um, colors smoothly using the tempera paint on your paper um, because tempera paint dries very quickly. You have to first plan ahead. So I have, I'm going to do some sky. So I'm going to sort of fade mine kind of between the white, this light blue, this little bit darker blue, um, and so on. So I'm going to kind of have those various uh, values of blue in my in my uh, sky here. So I kind of have them already mixed up. And that's what you want to do beforehand. So mix them up beforehand and get quite a bit, depending on like if you're doing a large area in your painting, you definitely want more paint than less paint. And it's always a good idea to grab the uh, larger brush and of course make sure it's rinsed out really well before you start. So I'm going to start with sort of go from like light to dark up this way. So I'll just kind of Grab this and I'll start painting sort of very quickly. You can already see there's some green that got into my brush. That's not good, but I'm just going to kind of go with it. Okay. And then I'm going to immediately grab the darker and start working it over here. And then I can grab and go darker. And I'm painting pretty quickly here. And then I'm going to go back quickly to my lighter value, bring it in. And now you can start to see that blend in here. And if I really wanted to do it, I could go and I could bring just some white, a little bit of white in here. Kind of near around this area, just to really sort of lighten that up. Okay, so that's how. Now notice all of my marks were kind of horizontal, all right? I want to sort of keep them pretty much in the same direction. I was making big movements and using my brush. So that's fading pretty well. And I can go back in and I can add a little bit of the darker value. But if you go too much back and forth, you'll see now I went over my, my darker spot and I don't want to do that. So I kind of have to watch myself. So that's how to create, you know, faded colors. Again, you could use just one value or um, if you had make like a sunset where you had uh, multiple colors in there, like maybe you had some, some pinks and some violets and some blues that kind of mesh together as the sun went down, you know, this is a way to do that. The next thing I want to talk, want to talk about is value, value, value. So we know that the more different types of value we had in our drawings when we were doing the charcoal drawings or the pencil drawings, the more depth well, the more our drawing looked like it was actually three-dimensional when of course it's just flat on the page. So the same thing of course goes with painting. If I, for example, I have these trees over here and if I was to um, start painting this tree and it's just all one color of the green And it's all nice and even. Um, and I might want to put a couple more layers on there. It's um, it's going to look very flat, okay? Because of course, in the real world, there's three-dimensional parts to everything. And things are sticking out, things are going in, and light hits them in different ways. So we have to replicate that. And to do that, we need different values. So I've already created some different values of my greens, from some of the dark, some middle, and some lights. And I can even do if I wanted to make it. I could even do some white over here and I could add a little bit and I could really make kind of a different light green over here too. So I could have, so I've got one, two, three, four, five different values of green just for my trees. You know, I like to mix the paint with a bigger brush and then I can come back in with one of the smaller brushes and maybe I'll use this one here. And so I'm gonna work on this here. So I might start with my kind of like regular color in here. So maybe I'm going to just sort of do some little chunks. And I can see there's some red in this brush. And I'll just do some little chunky marks here. Because you know, there's sort of little chunks of 
needles with these trees. And the way in which you're painting and your brush strokes, it's important. Because this is actually starting to look like, like a little evergreen tree. Right now I'm feeling like Bob Ross. It might be a happy tree. So, all right, that's kind of one layer. And it already sort of looks a little three-dimensional because there's some different things going on here. But uh, I'm gonna start putting some areas that are kind of darker. Some places, maybe you have a photograph you're working from, maybe you're sort of making it up kind of as you go along. And there might be more darker areas in here. And maybe I want to make it a little darker. So I'll grab some I don't know, too dark, that's okay. And I've got some really dark in here. Okay, and now I've got some of the highlights. Now, of course, if you did this all at once very quickly, um, sometimes it works out pretty well, but you could also go and get one of the hair dryers and dry your paint and then layer it a little bit. Now, if you're doing that, you have to be careful because um, tempera paint will sort of, if water is reintroduced to this area, it will go back and it will um, sort of dissolve the paint a little bit and that paint that you had on before will come off and it'll start mixing with your other layers. So you do have to be careful uh, when you're layering. And also something to notice that when you add white or you have a color plus white, and you're adding those together, it becomes more opaque, meaning it's less transparent. So this is more translucent where I can still see my pencil lines. I couldn't see these quite as much. And the paint this time around is a little thin, but I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and I'm going to add some highlights. So I have to keep kind of reloading my brush a little bit. Kind of, I'm overlapping in the front here because, you know, the sun's going to hit this side too. And then I'll come in maybe with some of this really light color. Maybe hit some of these in here. Okay. Now, I did this sort of quickly and kind of from my brain, but, you know, there's a big difference between just the single color and multiple uh, uh, variations of the same, multiple values of the same color. Okay, so th something to think about as you start painting your landscapes.